Tonight, I would like to speak directly to young men of the Aaronic Priesthood. Young men of the Aaronic Priesthood, you have been born at this time for a sacred and glorious purpose. It is not by chance that you have been reserved to come to earth in this last dispensation of the fullness of times. Your birth at this particular time has been foreordained in the eternities. You are to be the royal army of the Lord in the last days. You are youth of a noble birthright. I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith. But it will not be saved in Washington. These are the latter days. Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, being born and raised Mormon, all of us are taught about the theology of the premortal council in heaven. It's in our scriptures, and so we get taught it. And it uh, pits the church as those who are the followers of Jesus in the premortal council, council whereas uh, those who followed Lucifer are never to obtain bodies on earth as they too got to come to earth and uh, yeah there's the racist thing about the fence sitters but uh, that, that, that that's been suppressed since 1978 so unless you actually read about it in publications prior to you don't get taught it directly from church it ends up being transmitted through Mormon culture through your peers but uh, that battle for our souls as we come to earth to uh, embrace idol worship to avoid sin nobody actually recognizes that sin is not in an idol or association with an idol. You can't look at something and all of a sudden you're evil. <laughs> oh no, I touched the unclean thing. I must be a duck. <laughs> Therefore a witch. <laughs> a little Monty Python for you. And, uh, I, you know, you have Benson, who told me as a new priest that I'm the youth of the noble birthright, that I'd been held in reserve for this time, that uh, I was going to experience the latter days, that after 200 years, finally, it's here. And, uh... You know, as Mormons, or at least I, as a Mormon, wondered what my role would be in conquering Lucifer and his great and abominable church and overthrowing it to make sure that Jesus establishes the millennial reign of peace. <coughs> and that uh, how privileged I must be to be born in the true church, the one and only. And, you know, time goes on, we grow up, I'm now over 50, and Nelson finally comes out this last October conference to say, these are the latter days, or this is the latter days. Which means this is it. 
except that he's missing some things. What happened to the signs in the heavens? What happened to the signs on earth? Just telling us these are the latter days is uh, kind of vague in general. You know, are we supposed to therefore assume things that the signs have occurred? Are we allowed to use delirium charts, programs, to uh, search for these signs that are prophesied to occur? Or are we just supposed to say, nope, it's only sun shall be dark and moon turn to blood and stars fall from heaven. So vague in general. We're just supposed to accept that. <coughs> As you know, I've already been telling you about the latter days. From the very beginning. Before the latter days officially began. That fateful day in 2017. I gotta keep an eye on my camera. Apparently it decides to blur. <laughs> and I'm sort of suspicious because I'm looking at the clock on the back wall there and I'm going, hey. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, I'm getting bugged. Yeah. And so, I pursued my life to wondering, well, what is this great and abominable church that we are supposed to contend against? It's one specific church. And, uh, and I grow up among non-Mormons, Christians, born again specifically, and uh, they don't seem to realize they're in Lucifer's church. They don't tell me they worship Lucifer. <laughs> they tell me they worship Jesus Christ. And that he's real because the Bible told them so. <clears throat> and so, with the Mormon church, uh, we have Egyptian records. And Joseph Smith and the King Follett Discourse, which for some unknown reason is not in our Doctrine and Covenants. And yet it's often quoted going to be quoted, why has it been taken out or not put in? And I, I wanted to know how to translate. And so I pursued that course and I figured it out. Had to be the decipherer because nobody else in the world figured it out. And I've gone over that with you. People incorrectly believe in the uh, acronym theory of proto cyanetic rather than uh, actually looking at the patterns of the linear script with Egyptian characters. And then that led me to deciphering the, the characters in Egyptian that are not put in signless because. Egyptologists didn't know they were supposed to translate those two. And then that led me to understanding the Bible. And then that led me to, and then that led me to, and then that led me to. So that's how faith works. When you treat it like a seed that must be planted to produce the fruit. Because if you just keep the seed and you just say, yeah, I, I believe. I'm increasing my faith not planting a seed. Nobody can judge you by your faith if you do not produce that faith into fruit, the results, the consequences. And 
instead, because nobody pursues those consequences, claiming, no, you can't be judged, we actually can judge you, you've got nothing to show for it. And therefore we judge you as crazy. Sheep. It's that simple. And then you pull the religion card. Oh, you're persecuting me for my religious beliefs. No. You've got nothing to show for your so-called faith. So we're judging you. As incorrect. As liars and deceivers. And so... The same thing was done with pursuing church history because of my confirmation that Joseph Smith is a translator of Egyptian and Paleo-Hebrew. The bishop cast me out. How dare you say that Joseph Smith is a translator? I was treated like a Benedi by the church because I came to the church and said hey Joseph Smith is a translator awesome huh what do you mean you want to try to have me excommunicated you want me disappeared in a dungeon away from society for six years of my life for what again that Joseph is a translator huh <coughs> And so I already knew the corruption of the church. But I didn't realize how corrupt. Didn't realize that, oh my God, I was born and raised in the great and abominable church. The church that I was raised to believe was another church, a straw man, that I was going to uh, be a valiant uh, soldier for God, a warrior for God, you know, and put on the armor of faith, the whole armor of God. And even though it's talking about being a righteous, good person, uh, the Mormon church, with their latter days talk, uh, made it clear there was going to be war and if we didn't get to Zion we would have to fight for survival and it's in the scripture Doctrine and Covenants section 45 and, uh, and so obviously I did not want to be deceived because false Christ, false prophets will deceive Mormons and I didn't want to be those um, who were deceived. And so, I, okay. <clears throat> I've got the video I did last night being loaded. Oh, TWG. And so I'm having to watch this very carefully of what they pulled yesterday. But what I found out they also pulled yesterday. And it was right when I was talking about how uh, YouTube and they went and did it anyway. And there was nothing and they did it just to spite me. That's how the church trains and raises Mormons. And for some reason, I ended up being a rebel. Uh, because my parents both served missions, strong in the church, raised us just like Lucifer would have us be raised, taking away our agency. And <clears throat> and so I rebelled in the family 
and that upbringing caused me to rebel against the church making the association that the church taught my parents to do that okay so it's finished 26 views for last night's video before the one that I just posted that's crazy it's a breakout video when I first type in oh hey David been a long time since I've heard from you how you been and he's a subscriber and, and I just I haven't heard from you in like years <laughs> and all you have to say is interesting <laughs> they still have the warning oh, those bastards they won't take it down now Bear with me while I go to the next channel. I'm going to have to readjust the camera most likely. Jesus is here. And so, to find the news about the exposing of the secret combination in America, the little black membership book, to find the Skousens had been a part of that group, to find that Oaks is directly connected to that group, and to see Steve Bannon, likewise, in that group, which was not a surprise to me. I had already read the Daily Beast uh, news article interview uh, by him uh, in 2016, where he came out and said, yeah, I want to destroy everything. I'm a Leninist. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. And there the church is with him, associated with him, connected with him, working with him, and not getting locked up with him. I mean, that just was like the icing on the cake, because I'd already done my research in church history. And it's the same process. Make one discovery, that led to another, led to another, led to another, confirming others previously already known. As I keep going, keep connecting the dots, keep putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Realizing that even ex-Mormons don't have it accurate. They know many of the pieces, but nobody's bothered to try to put them all together. And I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's because the, the individual pieces are shocking enough as it is. But uh, when you put it all together, there's uh, even more incredible 
tale to tell. But uh, I'll give you one instance. <clears throat> so Joseph Smith Sr. was a master mason in Canandaigua, New York since 1818 until uh, September 1826 when William Morgan disappeared who was in Canandaigua working on his book when he disappeared. I mean, if you can't as a Mormon go wait a minute wait a minute William Morgan is working on a book trying to expose a plot to destroy America and he's there with Joseph Smith Sr. and the book never gets published but then Sr.'s son Jr. comes out with the Book of Mormon about a plot to destroy America telling about how the ancient native Indians had their nation destroyed by a secret plot to destroy them? And you're not able to put the pieces together. You're not able to go, hey, wait a minute, there's something about this. But then you read Heber C. Kimball under Masonry. And you go, he's lying to us. None of this is true, except what he is not telling us. In 1923, Kimball received Master Mason, that's the three craft degrees of Freemasonry, in the lodge at Victor Flats, and that's no longer a link, I don't know why they don't take away that link. Ontario County, New York. In 1824, he sent a petition to the chapter at Canandaigua, New York. To receive the York Rites degree of Royal Ark Masonry. See, if you don't if you haven't watched the videos where I go over this, you aren't going to understand how he's lying to us. This comes from his journal. There are some differences. But uh, he says his petition was accepted. Except there is no evidence of that petition being accepted because anti-Masons had burned down the chapter building in Canandaigua. <coughs> if anything from this, if you do not know the difference between York Rites and Scottish Rites, if you do not understand where a Royal Ark Masonry is placed after being a master mason, if you do not know the locations and of such because you don't know how to use Google Maps, or that you don't know that York Rites and Scottish Rites did not inhabit the same city back in those days, <coughs> or any of the other things involved, the one question that should stick out in your head is why didn't he mention Joseph Smith Sr.? Why is it not in our church history that Heber C. Kimball, upon being converted, was because he knew about the Smith Sr., because he had become a master, or he was a master mason and got approved for Royal Ark Masonry by Joseph Smith Sr.? Why is that not in our history? Why is that purposely left out? It should be something like, 
child, Heber C. Kimball, was introduced to the Book of Mormon and learned that Joseph Smith Sr. was involved in that organization because it was by his son who, you know, they can still keep the coded information. <clears throat> but that would help legitimize Brigham and Heber as legitimate successors, wouldn't it? And instead, this secrecy and cover-up with blatant lies and deceptions, there's only one conclusion, guys. And so, uh, what is this Adam on Diamond meeting? When this gathering is held, the world will not know of it. The members of the church at large will not know of it. And I just, I went over it with you. Reading it off the thumbnail that I'm putting for the Mormon Jesus is here. Secrets, even from Mormons, about the secret meeting of Jesus getting authority to rule the earth as a one world government that will be given to the church. And so, what is this meeting? When did it occur? Because it's before eight April 2024. So it's got to be some time before then. Three and a half years. And there are G7s and G20s. Those are open. Press is all over those. There is only one event where leaders of the world and Russell M. Nelson were involved. After which something happened that is talked about in scripture that was supposed to happen that has happened that is still going on that YouTube purposely spreads misinformation by silencing those who do give correct information as Mormons are given clues by Nelson So it, it tingles your itching ears to say, Oh, I think this is it. Oh, is it? I don't know. It could be. It might be. <laughs> but I mean, for the whole world to deny following the medical professionals, along with Nelson after that meeting it's clear to me that's what it was and Shanghai I saw right through that he even committed crimes in that action. And so, yeah. How do you, as a regular guy, defend against the greatest combination of evil this world has ever known?
one man against the world. All because I was born and raised Mormon. And was simply obedient, studied Mormonism. So what about the rest of you? What about you, David? Is it more than just interesting? <laughs>